And this is Undercover, where we're catching up with Bob Gordio, and it's a great story to tell, Bob. I mean, you've been involved with uh, Jersey Boys as one of the founders, one of the people, uh, as part of the story, and then right through until the creation of the story. Uh, and you've seen this story just roll out all around the world. You must be very proud to see yourself. Yeah, I am. I'm very proud of uh, Jersey Boys and, 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 you know, the people that have been involved with it, Des Mackinoff and... Uh, Michael David, uh, Rick Ellis, Marshall Brickman, Sergio uh, Trujillo, I, and we've just had an incredible team from La Jolla, which mm -hmm. is uh, where we premiered. And, uh, you know, I, I, I think it's Bob Cruz's line in the show, uh, uh, the stars are in alignment, <clears throat> which is, I think, the case with Jersey Boys. It was just one of those times in your life where everything works. Yeah. You know, just wor everything works. Yeah. Well, Jersey Boys is the story of Frankie Valli and the Four Seasons, Bob being one of the founding members of the Four Seasons and the guy who wrote all of the songs. Uh, when you see the story on, on, on stage, I mean, how much poetic license has been taken? Is it, is it as it happened? It, it, there's, there's juxtapositioning going on, who left when, so on, and the music is not in chronological order. Um, there's a couple of surprises, uh, like the opening. <laughs> I remember an older couple in La Jolla looking at each other and saying, are we at the right show? <laughs> <laughs> I said, well, that's good. A little shock value doesn't hurt anybody, yeah. right? Um, it, it's, uh, it's, it's just been a, a, a wonderful thing from the beginning. So it, it's always... Uh, uh, I'm losing a little track of where we started with this because I think I just repeated myself. But the question was about how you know how close to you know, how close I was. Yeah. To yeah. The story. Well, the story. Both Frankie and I uh, uh, communicated with uh, uh, Marshall and Rick early on. They got on board. El Rick Ellis first, and then Marshall, and then we we pretty much spilled our guts, <laughs> <laughs> so to speak, and. Uh, there's, there's, there's the art of writing, you know. Uh, we told our story, and they put it down on, on paper and, and wrote a phenomenal book. There's usually basis for everything in there, and Frankie, I think, concluded after seeing the show 20 or 30 times, it's about 95% accurate. Yeah. Uh, uh, did we say every single word verbatim? No, of course not. So... Uh, did they take a few liberties here and there? Yeah, yeah. Uh, you know, this we probably weren't as funny as they made us out to be, <laughs> uh, and we certainly don't dance as well as these kids do. Yeah, and uh, maybe didn't sing as well, but uh, yeah, it's very, very, very authentic to the point of sometimes being a bit frightening. Yeah, I guess from a plot, it's got all the right ingredients. It's got the star, it's got the songs, it's got the villain. Yeah, yeah, it's got a couple of villains. <laughs> uh, yeah, it's. Uh, I guess. I guess if you were to observe it from that standpoint, it's. It's pretty much got it all. You know, uh, you can have it all and still not work. Um, this is, happens to be one of those situations where it works. Yeah, and uh, you know, somebody who was involved with you becoming a member of the band was Joe Pesci, who yes. went on to become a famous actor after the, afterwards. What was Joe at at that point? <laughs> well. <laughs> As he's portrayed in, in the show, he, he was kind of someone that uh, was just around, you know, he was a friend. I played in a band, my first, second band after the Royal Teens, uh, when I left, it was a jazz quartet. Mm -hmm. And Joe played guitar and sang, kind of the front man, and uh, does a great porky pig. <laughs> <laughs> uh, he's just a funny guy. It's funny because when I saw him in The, uh, uh, the Raging Bull, I thought, my God, you know, he's a hell of an actor. Mm. And he went on to win an Academy Award for Best Supporting Actor. But I, I, I said to Judy at the time, Joey's a funny guy. If, if he ever makes a funny movie, he's gonna be, it's going to be a killer for him. And then, sure enough, he came along and he made Home Alone. Mm -hmm. And he made, uh, I forgot the one in between where he played some cameo, you know, uh, smaller roles. But he, he stole this, the scene because mm. he's such a funny, funny guy. And he's yeah. an excellent guitar player. He's an excellent singer, mm. so uh, um, he he. Uh, but but he was uh, there as he is in in the show and hung out with Tommy, 
Uh, and now, uh, well, I don't want to give too much of this away yeah. for people who, who haven't seen it. There, there should be a certain amount of surprise here. Yeah. But yeah, he was, he was one, of the, one of the guys. Mm. Well, People Tommy were, was the villain as portrayed in the show. Yeah. But you know, how integral was he to the success of the Four Seasons? Uh, you know, I think, I think you can't pull pieces out. Uh, I think everything was there and, and it played a role. I don't know if this could have happened if Tommy wasn't there in the beginning. It all, it all evolved uh, and took its proper course. Uh, um, when I came in the group, things changed. Uh, and then later on, music changed and we changed and can't take my eyes off you, the solo situation. So I, I have to say that, you know, given Tommy his due, uh, he was there, as he said in the show, you know, this wouldn't have happened uh, if, if I wasn't. Now, that's my line. <laughs> uh, of course, that one's true. Yeah. Uh, very important. I think it's very important. Nikki's role was very important. Mm. Uh, we carried on after both were gone. But, you know, similar to the Michael Jackson situation, Michael had his Quincy time and then he went off and did his own thing. And uh, brilliant music also. Mm. Uh, I'll, I'll take you back to 15-year-old Bob Gordio and a song called Short Shorts. Mm -hmm. yeah. uh, the first song that you had right. success with, I guess, right. 15 years old, and you've got this massive hit around the world. Mm. Yeah. What effect did that have on you? Well, I left high school. <laughs> <laughs> got me out of studying. Yeah. Um, it, it was pretty, uh, uh, pretty amazing for me. I was, was 15 or 16 by that time. I did uh, leave high school to go on the road with, as it states in the show, with Jackie Wilson and, and Buddy Holly and the Everly Brothers and Clyde McFadder and Sam Cooke. Uh, and and uh, it, it, was a, it was a tumultuous time in the U.S. because it was this segregation. There were lots of uh, uh, rioting going on and we were playing down the south. So four kids from the northern part of New Jersey experiencing that crossing the Mason Dixon line and and what went on and black and white rest stops with us in the bus was was a real eye-opener at a very early age you know I grew up very very quickly uh, coincidentally I just got my high school diploma I was about to ask you about <laughs> that because uh, congratulations yeah, that was about six or seven months ago it was great it was it, it, they were wonderful at, in Bergenfield High School and uh, they actually did the full tilt commencement, and yeah. the cap and the gown, and um, everybody was there except I was I was the only one <laughs> receiving you know, my diploma. But it, it, it was uh, something I missed, and it, and it was wonderful. My kids were there. It was a great, great day. Yeah. Let's get into the uh, the Four Seasons. The first song uh, that you wrote that was the hit, Sherry. Uh, right. That you wrote in 15 minutes, I believe. Yeah, that's true. I know. I, I've said this before. It sounds like a B-movie script, <laughs> but... Uh, I was just at my parents' house and uh, had 15 to 20 minutes before I had to leave to go to Newark for rehearsal at Frankie's, and it just popped into my head. And I wrote a quick lyric because I didn't have a tape recorder, and I didn't think I'd remember the melody without a lyric, and I'm singing it all the way down in the car and got to rehearsal, and off it went. You know, uh, Tommy and Nikki weren't enthralled with it. Frankie thought it was great. And uh, we got into a little voting thing, and it was a tie, two and two. And I think I said, or someone said, uh, well, let's call crew and we'll rehearse it a bit first and let him hear it and see what he thinks. And it's just like it happens in the show, you know. It was, uh, except, uh, I don't know how much... What, what's the language barrier here, you know? <laughs> I mean, what, you can how say far whatever can we you go? like. Well, we, we sang it for crew on the phone, and... Uh, uh, the response I got when I spoke to him was, if I don't fuck it up, that's a number one record. <laughs> it's not the way it is in a show, but, but yeah. it's not like we're at a loss for four-letter words. Yeah, but I, I guess, you know, back then, what was it, 62, 63? You know, yeah, it was like 47 61. years ago. Yeah. You could not possibly imagine that 15 minutes after you started to write that thing when it was completed, that here we are 10 years into the 20th, 21st century and you'd still be talking about it. No, I know. I it's it's quite mind mind boggling. Uh, it's one thing, you know. We've had a lot of offers before this happened to uh, to do movie of the week and things of that sort. But uh, we just sort of held out for. Uh, let's see if we can turn this into something more than just a, a you know quick burn. 
and and to actually have it happen and get it it's one thing to get it on the stage you know and have somebody care enough to produce it and direct it as as des uh, has done uh, but it's another thing to have it be this successful mm. it's funny at halftime uh, I, I did, we weren't there doing previews and uh, frankie nor i but a good friend of mine was there larry brown and um uh, he uh called me at intermission and he said my god he said if if it he said this is going to be bigger than you guys ever were <laughs> <laughs> so I said, I'm, well, that nothing would thrill me more. Yeah, and yeah. and so so it is.